so I'm going to start uh, with steps one through six of the project. And I believe it says, <laughs> here's my project. Step one, two, and three, I would actually do after step four and five. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the angles. Now, each of these triangles has a right angle in it, and it should be fairly obvious which one is the right angle. So go ahead and mark that right angle on each of the six triangles. And then uh, go ahead and fill in the other angle that's missing. So this one says 60 degrees and 90 degrees. That makes this one 30 degrees. That makes this one also 30 degrees. This one I have a 30, 60, 90, so 30, 90, this one's going to be 60 degrees. This one's also going to be 60 degrees. And then finally I have a 45, 45, 90, so I'm going to label these remaining angles 45 degrees. Now, it also says to label each of the hypotenuses 1. So I'm going to go ahead and on each triangle, I'm going to label the hypotenuse 1. Now I'm labeling it on the inside of the triangle because I'm going to be cutting the triangles out. So if I label it out here, it's going to get cut off. So let's make sure to label them in there. Now using our rules from the 45, 45, 90 triangles and the 30, 60, 90 triangles, I should be able to figure out the other sides. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if I know the hypotenuse, I know that the short leg is half of the hypotenuse. So what's one half of one? One half. So all my 30, 60, 90 triangles, I can go ahead and label that short leg one half. This is also a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The difference is my short leg is over here. So I'm going to label it one half. And this one, my short leg is over here, one half. Now, I can either use Pythagorean theorem to find the other one, but it's easier to use my, um, my special right triangle rules. So I am going to label the long leg now and the rule for the long leg is that it's the short leg times radical 3. So what's 1 half times radical 3 or radical 3 over 1 would be radical 3 over 2. So that's the length of the long legs. So I'm going to label this radical 3 over 2 as the long leg on each of my 36, 30, 60, 90 triangles. Radical 3 over 2. Radical 3 over 2 and radical 3 over 2. So my 30, 60, 90 triangles are done. They have all the angles, measure, angles labeled and all of the sides labeled. My 45, 45, 90 I need to do a little work on. I know that the hypotenuse is 1, and I know that the length of the side times radical 2 is equal to 1. So to find the length of the side, I'm going to divide by radical 2, and I can't leave 1 over radical 2 as my answer. I have to multiply by radical 2 over 2. That gives me 1 times radical 2 is radical 2. And radical 2 times, sorry, that's supposed to be a radical 2, is radical 4, which is just 2. So radical 2 over 2 is what the length of each of my sides or each of the legs of my 45, 45, 90 triangle are. So radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. So in essence, I have solved all six of those triangles. I have all of the angles measured and all of the sides measured. Now I'm going to go ahead and color my triangles based on the colors. I'm going to color these two blue, those two red, and those two green. Now the reason why it says light blue, light green, light red is because you want to make sure to still see what you have written there through the color. So don't color so dark that you can't see it, all right? All right, so there I have them all colored. You can see I didn't worry about staying in the lines because since I'm going to cut these out, it really doesn't matter if I stay in the lines or not. So now I'm going to cut them out, making sure that I do not cut these little circles off. I need the circles to stay on the triangles. So there I have one of my triangles cut out. That's one of the pink ones. I know the color is a little hard to see here, but I will go ahead and cut out the rest of them. So here I have all my triangles cut out. The next thing I'm going to do, and you could do this in class if you need to, if you don't have a hole punch at home, but I'm going to take a hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole in the middle of each of these white circles. Now be careful that your hole is as centered as possible because you don't want it to be off the edge and then it's not going to be able to hold on to anything. So here I have all my triangles. They are colored. I have my two red ones, my two blue ones, my two green ones. They are all labeled or solved. All the angles are labeled and the sides are labeled. And the last thing that I need to do is I need to go to my circle. Let me set my 
triangles aside. Don't lose any of your triangles. Keep them all in a safe place. Maybe a Ziploc baggie or something to keep them together. But I'm going to draw some lines on this circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect lines that are opposite each other. So, for example, if I have my x-axis right here, the line right above it is going to connect with the line right below the x-axis over here. So they are completely across. Every line I draw needs to go through the middle of the circle right there. As I draw the line, I want to give myself a little bit of space outside the circle because we're going to fill in some stuff later. So draw your line just like that. And then match our next set of, of points. Again, my line has to go through the center. All lines should go through the center of this circle. And we're just setting this up for some things so that we can do them later. Oops, let me make that one a little longer. So there's my first quadrant and my third quadrant. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second and fourth, connecting those lines. There's one, two, and three. So hopefully when you come into class tomorrow, you're going to have your circle that's drawn like that with the lines on it. And then you'll have all of your triangles colored and cut out and ready to go. All right, so there's your steps one through six on your unit circle project.